I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpiano.com. Today the subject is Baldwin Piano Company, one of the great American piano companies of all time and very close to my heart. I just wanted to give you just a brief background of the company and the significance of Baldwin in the American piano industry. Well, it all started in the 1800s by a man by the name of Dwight Hamilton Baldwin. Yes, D.H. Baldwin, as he was sometimes known, was a piano store owner. In fact, he was the Steinway franchise and had a very successful business. Well, the story is that Steinway had a relative coming to Cincinnati, and so he pulled the line from Baldwin and to give to his uh, nephew or whatever it was at the time, and Baldwin started making pianos. Well, little did Steinway know that years later, Baldwin would rise to be the number one manufacturer of pianos in the United States and gave the most fierce competition to Steinway's supremacy in the concert market. In fact, there was a time that uh, Aaron Copland, Leonard Bernstein, Jose Uturbe, more recently, Liberace, Bruce Hornsby, Dave Brubeck, many concert pianists, Earl Wilde, and my father, Morton Estrin, all Baldwin artists. So it was really kind of uh, fortuitous for, for Baldwin that they started making pianos. Early on, with the Model G that is, sits right here, Baldwin won awards in uh, St. Louis that catapulted them into international fame. They grew tremendously. Eventually, Baldwin diversified into a multi-billion dollar financial company and suffered a bankruptcy in the 80s. Interestingly, the piano people management bought back the Baldwin company, which was a great thing for Baldwin, so they were able to keep operations going. Of course, the influx of cheap Japanese and later Korean and other pianos made it impossible for Baldwin to continue. And indeed, eventually, the Baldwin Piano Company was sold to Gibson in the early 2000s. Gibson pretty much has mothballed the American operation, but I've been told that it's all sitting there, untouched. So at any moment, there is that possibility that these great Baldwin pianos could be made again. In the meantime, Gibson has bought not one, but two huge Chinese companies and is importing those pianos and putting the Baldwin name on them. So don't be confused by those pianos which bear no similarity to the great Baldwins of the past. But we can only hope that these pianos will again grace the concert stage because they are tremendously wonderful instruments. I've had the good opportunity of playing some of the greatest Baldwins of all time in helping my father as a Baldwin artist choose pianos for his many recordings and his concerts all over, including Lincoln Center and Carnegie Hall. I had many occasions to try the instruments and the thing that always struck me, because I also went to Steinway and chose pianos there, is the consistency of the Baldwin pianos. During the 70s and 80s, they were amazingly consistent one to the next. Whereas other piano companies, there's a tremendous variety. Baldwin manufacturing was really top notch, particularly in, after the 60s into the 70s and 80s when they owned Beckstein and Beckstein helped Baldwin to redesign their pianos. Just putting a beautiful cap on an illustrious history of one of the great American piano companies, Baldwin. My personal piano is a nine foot concert grand SD10 Baldwin and everyone who tries it agrees that it's the best concert grand they've played. And although I get to play on many, many fine concert grands in performance all over, I rarely play instrument as good as that SD10 upstairs. Any of you who are regional and want to try that piano or any of the other great pianos I have here, love to have you here at Art District Concerts. I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpiano.com. Thanks for joining me for this brief history of the Baldwin Piano Company. Thank you.